What's up, Tailgaters? You're in the booth with Tailgate Nate today. Welcome to my channel and welcome to the final bowl game preview and prediction for 2023, at least until we find out who's playing in the national championship game. It is yet another Big Ten SEC showdown, the final one here, previewing the Cheez-It Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida. We have the Big Ten runner-ups in the Iowa Hawkeyes facing off against Josh Heupel's Tennessee Volunteers. We're going to talk about everything Hawkeyes and Volunteers here in a minute, but before we do... I just need to thank you guys for all your love and support the channel is seen during the regular season and into the postseason here as well. Again, this is going to be my final one, my final bowl game preview and prediction again until we find out who's playing in the national championship game. And all the support has meant a, a lot to me. So if you guys want to continue to show your support, you want to see some uh, some uh, spring and summer content from me as well, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell so you know when videos get uploaded, continue watching my videos, like, comment, share, do anything you can to help support the channel because anything you do, guys, does mean a lot to me. So with all of that out of the way, I, I, I do need to say before we get into this one, sometimes, look, it can be a little tricky to determine, okay, who's opting out, who's entered the transfer portal, and things like that. So uh, Hawkeye fans, volunteer fans, if I miss a name or anything like that, please leave it in the comment section down below uh, so uh, that, uh, that I'm aware and everyone else who is watching this video is aware there as well. But with all of that out, out of the way, it's finally time to uh, to end my bowl game preview predictions. We got one more. It's this one here. 17th ranked Hawkeyes, 21st ranked Volunteers. Let's dive into it first. Talking about the Iowa Hawkeyes offensively. Well, I don't think I need to speak too much on this Iowa offense for a, a lot of people to know uh, what this offense has been doing all season long. I mean, this is probably, you can make the case why it's the worst offense in the entire country. They don't gain yards. They don't score points. They're not good on third down. They turn the ball over. The offensive line is not up to the Iowa standard that the offensive lines with this program have set way in the past, right? Just nothing about this Iowa offense is, it, 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 nothing about this Iowa offense screams like, oh, hey, they're pretty good at that. Now they do have the tendency to have a solid rush tack, right? But that's when guys like Leshawn Williams and Caleb Johnson are on. But no one here that has a significant amount of carries for Iowa averages more than five yards per carry. Now, again, Leshawn Williams is very, very close. When Kane McNamara got hurt, I think they lost a ton of talent within this offense. Eric All being hurt there as well. Definitely lost one of your better pass catching options there. And even though Eric All was hurt this year about midway through, through the season, he still leads the team in receiving yards. 299 yards and three touchdowns. Nico Regani is that lead guy now here for the, this team. Uh, the Deontay Vines, the guy who had 12 catches, 134 yards, uh, I believe has entered the transfer portal, will not be playing here for the Hawkeye offense. But this is a Hawkeye offense that, look, when you play an offense as dynamic as Tennessee, and we're going to talk about it here in just a little bit, you need to find something offensively and this is a Hawkeye offense that look can rip off the big play here and there now they're not accustomed to doing it Leshawn Williams does have an 82 yard run Caleb Johnson does have a 67 yard run there as well but this team does not hit the big pass play in fact they don't hit the big play period this is just an Iowa offense that if you're a Hawkeye fan watching this game you want them to find something you want to see some upside moving into the the, the the uh, future, especially since a new offensive coordinator will be coming in next year as well. Now, the the opposite is true for this Iowa defense because this Iowa defense is simply fantastic. It has a ton of really, really good, phenomenal players. Now, sadly, they still are going to be without one of their the better players in Cooper DeGene, probably their best defensive player. He is still out nursing an injury but you have a ton of phenomenal defensive weapons here uh, for as many sacks as the offense has given up. Hey, the, the defense has come here and uh, gotten one for one, right? Tit for tat, uh, 37, or not 37, excuse me, 27 sacks on the year. They forced 15 turnovers. They, they do a really good job at capitalizing off of those turnovers. They're almost an elite third down defense. In fact, you could make the case on why they are. The rush defense is one of the best in the country. The secondary has forced 10 picks with 51 passes uh, defended. They don't allow the, the big play here. For everything that this Iowa offense is not, this Iowa defense is. And it is what has led Iowa into the Big Ten Championship game. It is what has helped Iowa win double-digit games again this season. But again, you're going up against a dynamic offense here in the Tennessee Volunteers. And not only 
Are they dynamic? They're very, very balanced. Now, this is an offense that's going to be losing a lot of key weapons, right? First of all, the quarterback that has led them all season long in Joe Milton, 2,813 yards, 20 touchdowns and five picks. He has opted out to prepare himself for the NFL. He will not be playing as well as leading rusher Jalen uh, uh, Wright. 1,013 yards, four touchdowns, uh, will not be playing as well. I even think there's a chance that Jabari Small is not going to be playing here in this game either. He has 475 yards, two touchdowns, is the second leading rusher here for the Tennessee Volunteers. Again, I'm not too sure about uh, his status. I've seen both. I've seen that he's playing. I've seen that he's not playing there as well. Volunteer fans, if you could let me know, that would be awesome. But more than likely, and really no matter what, it means an uptick in carries here for Dylan Sampson. Still a lot of good weapons there on the outside. Squirrel White, Ramel Keaton, McAllen Castles, that tight end, Dante Thornton, and others there as well. But they are going to have a new quarterback. I believe the number three or four pocket passer out of either last year's or the year before that's re re recruiting class. I am going to butcher this last name, so I apologize to volunteer fans everywhere. But Nico, I am a Leva. Uh, he is a very, very uh, uh, good talent. Nico is thrown for 163 yards, 6.3 yards per throw with one touchdown on 61 and a half percent completion percentage this season. Again, he still has a ton of weapons to work with, and he's going to be able to show what he's really made of here. Uh, he could be the future at quarterback for Tennessee and Josh Heupel moving forward. Pretty darn good third down offense. They don't turn the football over. Offensive line does a pretty darn solid job at being able to, to protect its quarterback. It's going to get, it's going to need to give Nico a lot of time to throw there as well. Moving on over into this Tennessee defense. Hey, that was the concern about this team last year, right? Where was the defense here it is it has improved a ton from from last season now you are going to be without some key weapons on this side of the ball as well one of the best defensive edge rushers defense events in the entire country and tyler barron 28 tackles six sacks he has opted out he will not be playing uh and you're also going to be without a ton more uh, uh talented players there as well in the defensive backfield you're going to be without tamari and mcdonald you're also going to be without wesley walker there as well. Those are your fourth and fifth leading tacklers, re respectively, that have a huge impact on this secondary. Now, the secondary is not super ball hawking, only 33 pass defended and 10 picks, but those 10 picks have mattered a lot. This is the defensive front that is excellent generating pressure. They've generated 36 sacks on the, the, the season. James Pierce is another really, really good guy on that defensive front that is absolutely a lot more than capable of creating his fair share of uh, pressure. He is very good. This is the Tennessee rush defense. That is good. But even with those two guys in McDonald and Walker in that defensive backfield, they're susceptible to giving up the big play through the air. However, that's not going to be much of a problem. You're facing an offense in the Iowa Hawkeyes that struggles to get really anything going at all, which just leads me into my what to watch for. They're kind of like your keys to the game. It's things I think you should keep an eye on while you're paying attention to this one. Can the offense perk up? This is a... Hawkeye offense that look quite simply just needs to find any sort of rhythm whatsoever. And it could have a tough time running the ball against this Tennessee defensive front, even though Tyler Barron is not going to be there. I think it's going to have a tough time attacking the secondary. You just don't have a quarterback that can get the ball downfield. You don't have any wide receivers that are any cl or that are close to being the game breakers. So can the offense just find any rhythm at all? You're going to need it when you play a Tennessee offense that's going to go and score points and has a tendency to go really, really fast. But defensively, this is where a lot of the things lie in for Iowa, right? I think it's no mystery that Iowa's going to win the special teams battle here. But defensively, pressure the young and inexperienced quarterback. Make Nico throw some passes that he is not comfortable with making. Again, this is going to be, I do believe, his first start on the season uh, for Nico this year. 16 of 26 for 163 yards. Uh, also, five rushes for 44 yards. Has proven he can get side of the pocket and run as well. So, pressure the young and experienced quarterback. Get him down on the ground. Don't let him get outside of the pocket either. He can be dangerous out there as well. But the run game for Tennessee is missing key parts. Uh, again, thousand yard rusher and Jalen Wright has opted out. He's not playing. And then there's a chance that I've read that Jabari Small is not going to be playing in this game either. Attack the backfield, generate turnovers, and let your secondary lock down these Tennessee wide receivers. That's the key to the game for the Iowa Hawkeyes. It all lies 
within this Hawkeye defense. If they can get the job done and they can hold Tennessee to uh, well under their average in points, well under their average in yards, and this Iowa offense can capitalize off turnovers that inevitably this Hawkeye defense will force, it's going to be a good day here for Kirk Ferentz and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Moving on into the Tennessee Volunteers, though, Nico finally gets his chance, and as do some of his weapons as well. Again, this is a, a, a team where you're going to see a couple of guys step up here and make some plays, uh, most notably that in Dylan Sampson. He inevitably, just with Jalen Wright not playing, is going to get an uptick in his carries. We could even see a guy like Cameron Selden come in and run for this team as well. I think a couple of these younger wide receivers are going to get a little bit more playing time here in this game, but it's going to be a tough battle to fight because you're battling one of the better defenses in the country in the Iowa Hawkeyes. You have to be able to take advantage of Nico is really going to show the college football world what he's made of and if he is the future at quarterback for the Tennessee Volunteers. If you are the Tennessee Volunteers defensively, don't let this run game get going. That is what helps drive this Iowa offense. When the run game gets going, they get a lot more confident. Not only the offense, but the defense gets confident as well because that's just what Iowa does. If this run game is going, uh, then they're going to end up controlling the clock here. They're going to win the time of... Uh, possession battle and that's something that Tennessee does not want does not want to see happen right so if you let this Iowa run game get going and they can and they rip off a big run say like a 67 yard run for a, a touchdown I'd start to get a little bit worried if I were the Tennessee volunteers but I also wouldn't get too worried because I don't think Iowa is going to keep up with Tennessee Tennessee is going to have too many possessions here for as good as the Iowa defense is it's not going to be able to hold uh, the Tennessee Volunteers all game long. I was going to come up with some turnovers. They're going to make some plays. Again, I do think they're going to rip off that one long touchdown run, but Tennessee simply has too much offensive firepower. I think Nico has himself a pretty good game, and the Volunteers win this one 23-13. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below, but as always, remember to play hard but tailgate harder. I'll see you guys when we start previewing the national championship. Goodbye.